Thank you very much, uh, and uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, wonderful to be here in in Seattle. And uh, over the next 10, 15 minutes, uh, I'll try and you know take you through a little bit about the emerging digital landscape in India. What are some of the growth drivers? And uh, give you a little sneak peek into what is happening as far as gaming is concerned. Uh, hopefully to interest some of you, whether you all are developers, uh, publishers, uh, and looking at to that market. So I thought, let me just tee it off with uh, playing a little video for you. Uh, kind of It's one of those rare markets which kind of moves from 2G to 4G pretty much in the next uh, 12 months. So if we were behind the world when it came to 2G about by three years and almost nine years for 3G, uh, we've just rolled out about three months back the first of our 4G circles. Uh, just to give a context to, uh, to this, uh, UK, where in the next two days there will be the Olympics, uh, as a market, even the spectrum auctions for 4G services have not started. Here in the United States, clearly, uh, that has been introduced. So we've become one of about eight, nine key markets, which in a way leapfrogs, and that is perhaps one of the single biggest reasons for each of you folks to uh, at least consider and start looking at that market a little more closely. Uh, very young nation, as was described, uh, close to about 60% you know, of the people of 1.2 billion people are below the age of 25. Uh, huge demographic for everything to do with gaming in any case. Yeah. Just to summarize some of the stats which were there on the video itself, uh, currently the third largest uh, market in the world as far as internet is concerned, about 130 million uh, uh, consumers. Uh, and estimated to grow to a little over 500 million pretty much over the next three, three and a half years. Uh, also an interesting market when it comes to cable, which is direct to home, and I will talk a little bit about what we are doing in gaming uh, in that as a segment. Already about 58 million consumers have set-top boxes, uh, reaching close to about 170 million different uh, sort of households. Uh, the mobile market, uh, you, you, you can't sort of uh, not talk about that, uh, still adding almost about uh, 10 million consumers every month. Uh, in unique uh, customer base perspective, it'll be probably about 600, 650 million because a lot of people have dual SIMs. And uh, the two segments which have seen the maximum traction till now have been music and video. And gaming is clearly uh, uh, emerging as, as, a, as an important segment as we move towards data. Some of the other sort of uh, elements to bear in mind when it comes to a market like ours, uh, unlike the West, uh, you know, uh, still a market which is uh, feature phones as well as smart feature phones. So we sell about 220 million devices each year. Uh, at this point in time, roughly about 130 million devices are what we will call as internet-capable devices. 
uh, and close to about 60% of those are getting activated each year. So we're adding about five and a half to six million consumers who are getting onto the internet, and uh, almost 80% of those are uh, being driven uh, by mobile phones. Uh, we've seen in the last four or five years a uh, fair amount of you know, content embedding within which gaming was also uh, one of the components. And in the last about 12, 18 months, we're seeing more of a service economy that's uh, building up. We as a company, amongst other things, manage the entire platform for a company called, uh, for uh, uh, Samsung's uh, Fun Club. And, uh, you know, categories like uh, gaming are certainly on the rise even uh, in terms of what's happening there. A uh, couple of other important trends where gaming uh, becomes uh, a big catalyst uh, for growth. Uh, there's a historic uh, act which was passed recently, which is Right to Education uh, Act, uh, about uh, nine months back. And along with this, uh, the Indian government is actively encouraging uh, you know, uh, children to have access to low-cost tablets. They've given out the first order of about 10 million devices, which are going to be priced at as little as $35. Uh, and this kind of sets the pace for a uh, whole host of uh, segment beyond mobile devices itself, as in phones, uh, where again, gaming will be an important uh, uh, element. <clears throat> so with this backdrop in terms of data statistics, uh, uh, just some insights into apart from the conventional six, seven different genres of gaming and apart from uh, the segments of gaming that you know you could have casual online, social gaming, uh, uh, mobile gaming, uh, console is, is, is uh, uh, not such a big segment as far as, what are some of the content categories that have been driving this industry? Um, so we are from, uh, from India, so Bollywood goes pretty much with everything that's happening uh, and therefore, it isn't unusual that you start seeing a lot of films where gamification, elements of uh, little casual games have started emerging uh, on this. And we make a fair number of films, so, you know, it's, it's uh, and sometimes our games also, from one level to the other, sort of break into a little jig with a dance as well. So, you know, uh, just get used to slightly different forms of gameplay and, and uh, consumers as well. I'm just gonna take you through one or two examples of things that we have done. Uh, this is a, a fairly successful franchise. It's a kind of a, one of those gangster movies of sorts. Uh, for them, uh, there was a series of games that we did. The first one, which I wanted to show you or uh, talk about was, a game done using voice, IVR, so, you know, interactive voice recognition. Uh, we have a sh universal short code, which is 54646, uh, and it runs across all the 14 telecom carriers. A consumer uh, just needed to dial in, uh, and it was a trivia-based game. Uh, you know, you just dial in, and when you uh, make the call, uh, the leading actor kind of gives you prompts, and there are daily questions about, you know, uh, it's essentially to help him escape uh, from the cops and uh, as uh, various gamers from different parts of the city uh, were clearing levels, he was in a way sort of, you know, uh, the main proposition to them was that you could join his gang and in the physical world actually get a chance. About 100 uh, people from across uh, got a chance to meet this actor who's an extremely popular uh, actor by the name of Shah Rukh Khan. <laughs> Uh, we took this entire experience uh, uh, into mainstream media as well. So across uh, newspapers and, and uh, various other media, uh, there was always a call to action pertaining to uh, this particular voice-based game that I'm talking about. Uh, of course, there was a mobile uh, uh, game that was developed, both for feature phones as well as iOS, Android. Uh, this is an example of something that was done for feature phones. You know. Uh, you typically uh, develop games which would be about between 800K to about 1.2 megs or so, uh, keeping in mind that these are devices with uh, limited capabilities. But it's interesting enough, you know, gameplay would be about uh, three and a half to four and a half minutes or thereabouts, and it gets engagement. And there's a lot of in-app purchases in that that are built in because uh, there's, a f there's a large economy as far as other digital content. I mean, just we as a company last year did about 1.1 billion paid transactions, uh, you know, across uh, different telecom companies. So you can sort of trigger sales in that. 
there was an entire, so this was, there was two uh, games that were done. One was a prison break uh, kind of a game that was uh, put forward. Um, and the other was a pursuit, which was really uh, playing around with a racing game as such. This was uh, a game which was done for the smartphone. was the, the, the actual trailer, which was the, Interestingly, we took the game onto set-top boxes as well. As I mentioned to you earlier, uh, roughly about 58 million uh, consumers. Uh, we run a couple of uh, gaming uh, channels uh, with uh, the largest uh, uh, set-top box manufacturer, which is Tata Sky, which is a joint venture between News Corp and the Tata Group. Uh, they have roughly about eight and a half uh, million consumers. And in a matter of about 18 months, today there are about 800,000 consumers who are signed up, who pay anything between uh, 60 cents to about 90 cents or thereabouts on a monthly basis and get access to uh, a variety of games which they can play. So this particular game was taken uh, uh, on the set-top box. Now the interesting thing to note here is that we ended up developing on the NDS platform. Uh, so essentially you couldn't get any new device inside of the home. The set-top box is the same. Uh, these are uh, not the uh, set-top boxes which have the return path, so they're not IP-based, so one-way linear communication. Uh, the, the games would be about one and a half meg to 1.8 meg, uh, and your entire gameplay was with the set-top box remote itself. Uh, it's been fairly successful, like I said, about 800,000 consumers, and continue to grow uh, on a monthly basis. So. As one segment, this was an example that I, I, I shared with you. Uh, sport, again, big, big category uh, of what gets done. Um, our version of baseball is a game called cricket, uh, which can, you know, there are multiple levels of this. Uh, it can go on from a couple of hours to five full days that you play the game. So the more popular one in recent times is the one which gets over in three and a half hours. Uh, and yes, uh, you know, uh, we do, uh, we have an old standing rivalry with both Australia, uh, England, Pakistan, and there are these five day matches as well, uh, which happen. Thankfully on, 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 on games, it's like quicker, you know, 10, 15 minutes in between breaks, uh, and you can take that entire uh, thing forward. So it is, uh, whilst the national sport is hockey, this is without a doubt the un, uh, unofficial national sport for us. Um, and one of the most social uh, online. There are a series of uh, very innovative games around this that have been built. And if anyone wants to get a more prominent presence into a uh, local market, you know, uh, as a category, it's something that you should be looking at. Uh, you know, typical matches will have actually uh, upwards of close to about four, five hundred million people uh, um, actually watching these uh, uh, games. So. Our own uh, versions of, we've done the conventional sort of cricket games, but we've done a lot of uh, different varieties. I'm just sharing with you again to trigger some thinking in your mind. So uh, cricket, as in any sport, betting uh, goes pretty much hand in hand, uh, whether it's official or unofficial. So we thought, you know, an idea of a cricket-based stock exchange would be an interesting uh, thing to build. Uh, we built this up as a virtual uh, trading game where you trade, buy and sell around this that have been built, players and teams, and it was integrated between online and mobile. And, uh, you know, uh, within the first month itself, upwards of 500,000 uh, sort of uh, consumers. Now, that for a market like ours, honestly, if you don't get for anything a few hundred thousand, a few million engagements, then... Uh, you, you're probably not doing something right. So don't, uh, you know, uh, uh, go by those numbers. But in, my point was, you know, uh, consumers in, in the market are being receptive to a lot of interesting innovation that can be brought about uh, with this. These are just some screenshots of, uh, you know, how you would have your portfolio, uh, you know, the entire process of trading. We would keep feeding uh, real life scores from various parts of the world so that, you know, the players and the teams it's, uh, are, a, in a sense, in a real basis, uh, their uh, stock is moving up and down, as it were. And as a consumer, you could sort of follow that and, and, and take that entire thing. So, in a nutshell, uh, market like uh, India, uh, purely because of the sheer pace of growth that we are witnessing, 
you know, uh, this year we'll do about 30 million smartphone sales in the market out of 220 odd million uh, total devices that will happen. But going into two, 2016, uh, it's projected that these numbers will be about 275 million devices each year. So just for the sheer size of uh, what's coming, I think uh, you know, we will and we will pretty much skip the console generation. So moving, moving from uh, feature to smart feature to very soon smartphones as well and, and take that time. Uh, some of the mainstream companies have already started coming into our market. Uh, they have set up shop uh, in, in, in cities like Hyderabad, which have become big development center. Several of these companies like EA, et cetera, have uh, uh, strong development uh, centers as well. And uh, they are looking at uh, you know, building also for the, not just the domestic market, but from there for the global market. Uh, other than uh, cricket, different sporting categories, uh, you know, the various leagues uh, have had uh, gaming experiences uh, being built around. And the consumers are, you know, you've got a blend of both. You've got one set of customers who would be just as demanding as any uh, mature market, you know, be it uh, US, Korea, Japan. Uh, you know, they will look towards uh, experiences which are... Uh, they could be augmented, they could be HD, they could look at 3D, uh, and apart from, uh, and you know, even the, I didn't talk about the social uh, landscape, uh, Facebook, for Facebook India is now already the second largest market, almost 60 million consumers, and they're looking at in the next three years growing to about 300 million for those of you who've done things as far as casual online and, and social, on, uh, social networks like Facebook, uh, it's in. Uh, there are, in, my, in our mind, close to at least about 200 brands now that are closely looking at uh, gaming, and, and hence uh, there is a pre uh, freemium and ad-funded ecosystem also, uh, which is getting built around uh, from there. So, uh, essentially, you need to collaborate, you know, look for the right partner because, you know, language, areas, nuances, 14 telecom companies. Uh, the telecom companies, unlike the West, make no mistake about this, uh, in most uh, mature markets, you're already in an environment where uh, it's the, the Apple and the, uh, the iOS and the Android ecosystems, which are the whole over the top, which is opening up. But in markets like ours, where you don't have billing options of significance, you do need to co-opt with the telco ecosystem. There are, uh, we have all of 14 telecom companies in a rather competitive market of ours. Uh, they are looking for uh, access across screens. You do need to localize your content uh, significantly uh, and, and essentially, you know, so in summary, young population, rising disposable income, increasing number of mobile users, and clearly a market where developers and publishers are also proliferating. Uh, I thought I'll just summarize by showing you a little video of a, a game that we had done for a movie uh, which was released recently called Ferrari Ki Savari. It's about this young kid who aspires to be uh, a cricketer uh, like Sachin Tendulkar. Sachin is, is like, uh, you know, the, the world's number one uh, cricketer. And he is, uh, amongst other things, known for his passion for cars. And he has this Ferrari uh, in, in real world. Uh, so in this particular film, uh, they'd actually taken his Ferrari and, and there's a whole story built around that. What, we, what I'm going to show you here is something interesting that we did. We, we did an entire augmented reality uh, uh, environment around that. It was obviously done on the mobile as well, but this video is uh, an augmented reality uh, experience in the real world. So I'll, I'll just play the video and you'll, you'll get a sense of what's happening out there. People could just come in the mall and get a sense like they're sitting inside of a Ferrari. The 
last two characters were actually the actors in the film, and you know they were part of the whole promotional gig uh, that happened. So, uh, welcome all of you to to India, and I hope that you will consider uh, uh, our market as well. Uh, it promises to be uh, an interesting and exciting market, and hopefully a rewarding market for all of you. So, thank you so much to Casual Connect and to Jessica and our wonderful team for giving us this opportunity. And uh, you know, uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Niraj. We have a few minutes for questions. Are there any questions for the audience, for Niraj, about the opportunity of India? Yes. As an iOS developer and Android developer, what's, uh, if we've got titles we think would monetize in the Indian market, how would we go about taking the products from those platforms and bringing them to the Indian market? Seems like a big challenge given the diverse number of handsets and the skill set of the studio being focused on Android and iOS. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, so uh, just to give you a little sense on how the numbers are stacking up for us, last year uh, we did 11 million uh, smartphone, real sort of iOS, Android. Uh, uh, RIM is still a, a player in the market uh, of, of certain significance. This year, like I mentioned, it'll be closer to about 30 million devices. So already the market is becoming interesting. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, unlike in the, you know, in the West where you've got a monetization model from an advertising perspective uh, that's there, the yields in our market are low. So what we recommend is if you've got you know, popular titles, uh, you know, look at co-opting with the telco ecosystem. Several of the telecom companies have at least put up Android stores uh, and they are giving a paid option for consumers to uh, buy into that. So uh, the way you should look at it is look at a company that can give you that distribution uh, into, uh, into that market. Uh, you, your chances that you will make more revenues uh, than just putting it up uh, in the conventional sort of storefront and hoping for advertising to uh, uh, get you that payment. The other thing that is beginning to happen, at, again, on Android side, certainly not on iOS because they don't permit that, but uh, there are at least about 30 device manufacturers who have adopted, and they are all looking to even uh, embed some content. And therefore, there are possibilities of you even cutting uh, commercial deals in an embedded format. You mentioned that one of the key differentiators was price for a game. What are, what are the price points like sure. in India? Uh, so we, we have very unique uh, uh, pricing uh, modules. Typical uh, pricing uh, for games could be about, uh, uh, a mean would be like closer to about 50 cents or thereabouts. Uh, there will be titles which will even be a dollar and even a dollar and a half. Uh, but we also have uh, very interesting, what we call as games clubs that are created inside of the telco. So you can subscribe and you will get access to, you can play two games, five games on a daily basis, whatever. And there, the pricing can be as little as uh, 10 cents a day, uh, and you are uh, a recurring consumer uh, and get a large variety of games to play. So uh, different types of models that are being uh, coming across. Right now, the market is roughly about 200 million plus uh, download and transactions are happening on a monthly basis as far as gaming is concerned. Uh, you mentioned localization. Um, uh, I get uh, naively asked the question, because uh, that's my business, quite often, uh, do you translate into Indian? Uh, um, sure. And uh, so I was wondering, you know, what, what's your advice as far as the, the different languages and the dialects that, that sort of are sort of first tier uh, that you would have to look at uh, sure. to, to get coverage? So if you asked us this question, say, around the same time last year, my response may have been that, you know what, you can get away with basic English because, I mean, there are over 300 million people who speak English, uh, you know, that core level of what is still net-connected consumers are all uh, capable. Uh, but uh, I'll draw an analogy from the way Hollywood is and, and the uh, it's a large English film market. Uh, we make Spider-Man 
speak uh, seven regional languages, uh, you know, including Tamil and Punjabi and Bhojpuri and, you know, uh, languages of that nature apart from English. So now as the market is kind of getting into more and more of middle India, the significance of language is becoming uh, far more prominent. And you find uh, receptiveness of consumers plus repeat, you, you know, usage is more. So I would encourage, you know, now uh, some component of uh, language adaptation. If, um, I, I, I'm, I missed the very beginning of your presentation, so maybe I missed this answer, but let's say I was a developer of a successful mobile game, iOS game, here in the U.S., and I was interested in entering the U.S. market, or the Indian market. Do I call you? Um, and partner with you? Do I call you and get some recommendations about who I might work with in India? How does one find the people that you would sure. want to work with there? So the first, the first uh, uh, thing you need to bear in mind is that for scale, in a, we're a unique market in the sense that unlike in most parts of the world where the telecom ecosystem is completely crumbling, you know, you're just doing the over the top. So you're a publisher, you're an independent developer, you, you look for somebody and you publish your game on a, on a marketplace and, and, you know, hope that thereafter uh, sales happen. In our case, largely because to get scale, you have to work within the telecom ecosystem. Now, that requires billing integration, et cetera, of what can be done. So uh, the answer would be there are, you know, at least half a dozen companies, you know, uh, like ours, uh, uh, whom you could talk to and uh, uh, you could sort of get into a partner relationship uh, for your games to be distributed. Uh, even EA, just to give you a perspective of the complexity of the market, even EA doesn't distribute directly. So their entire catalog is available, but it's actually available through uh, uh, some other uh, entity, as it were. So that they, and they find it, uh, uh, you know, because the systems are reasonably transparent, uh, you know, you're able to take care of what the requirements and, you know, um, handle that, and, and it works much better. Awesome. Thank you very much for your time and you're for welcome. coming to Thank you. present today.